and welcome to La Rosa Reads. Today, I'm going to be sharing with all of you my favorite surprise reads of 2021. Let's talk books. I am super excited to talk to you guys today about my surprise favorite reads. So we have those books that like we get, we heard they were okay, or maybe the cover grabbed our attention or someone said, you know, you should check out this book. Just, you're just thinking to yourself, this isn't a book I was planning on reading, but it's kind of got my attention. Let me give it a try. And I'm not going to have too high of expectations, but it might be okay. And so those are the books that I'm sharing with you today. Those books that I grabbed and, you know, I picked them up and I thought, let's give this a try, but I don't really have high expectations. It'll be aight. And I ended up being blown away, y'all. Like some of these books, I was totally blown away. So let's do this. The first book I want to share with you guys that was a surprise favorite of mine was Outlawed. This book by Anna or Anna North, excuse me if I, like sometimes I'm really a little nervous about saying Anna or Anna, and forgive me, I should have probably checked that out before I shared this book with you. But anyway, so Outlawed is a book that is one of the Reese's Book Club selections. I picked this up the month that it was um, a monthly selection of hers, and I thought, I'll give it a try. It may or may not be that great. But for those of you who know me personally, I am a country gal. I'm so proud to be from West Virginia. And anytime you have a cowgirl and a cowgirl hat, we got some pink. I was like, let's do this. Let's give it a try. And so I ended up being blown away. This book was filled with charismatic characters from Ada to the kid to even some of those characters that made brief appearances. You just found yourself attached to them in this journey and it was like living on the edge. I even felt a little bit like I was living on the edge just reading it and I was just so empowered. It was truly a book that celebrated women and empowers women and so I was a huge fan of this book, Outlawed, and I just love the journey. I felt like the book was always like paced. The pacing of it was just flowing for me. You know, there wasn't like a moment where I was reading and I was like, oh my gosh, can we get over this part and like get on to the good stuff? It was like constantly like on this pace of just being good. And I just absolutely loved it. One thing that I do have to say, if I have any critique of this book, is that it was, how do I put it? It wasn't really. 100% accurate or believable. So I'm not sure if you're someone who like needs a book to kind of be a little more realistic. I don't know if this book is for you. There was a little bit of satire, you know, historical fiction. And so my question for you is, does a book like this have to be 100% historically correct for you to enjoy it? My next surprise read is Black Buck, y'all. I was pleasantly surprised that this was a Read With Jenna book club selection. It just, I don't know, from the books that I've seen her choose for her book club, it, it was a little different. It had a different vibe to it. So first of all, y'all, the cover just caught me. Okay, we have a brown hand and we have a cup of coffee. So, you know, I just was like, I've got to check this out. So there's some twists and turns with this book that kind of threw me off. I thought, I didn't realize how much of a, of a satire it was. So when I was reading along, I was like really into this character. I was really invested in Darren's journey. And I was just like, oh my gosh, he's gonna do this. He's gonna conquer the world. He's gonna make some money. He's gonna, you know, support his mom. And then there was like this twist. And then there was another twist. And then there was another twist. And it was just like, whoa, y'all like slow down, but don't slow down, keep it going. And I absolutely loved it. And listen, this book had arguably my favorite favorite, most shocking ending out of all the books that I've read in 2021. Love this book. So my question for you is, was this story doing the most for you? Like, 
Was it just too much? Was it too much of a stretch for you to enjoy it? Because there are some reviews that argue this book was a hot mess, that it was just too much, it was too unrealistic, it was all over the place, and um, I'm curious, what did you think? My next surprise favorite is The Sweetness of Water. Now you guys, this is the perfect time for me to explain to you that I'm not always going to be holding a book that I'm talking about. And here's why. I personally do not believe in holding on to books and having this ginormous bookshelf or bookcase and like just mountains of books behind me in my house. I actually, you know, look, I say this with love. Love y'all who have those ginormous collections of books behind you and, you know, are proud to show them off. Do you, okay? I'm not mad at that. But for me personally, as an educator and a book lover, I just think it's such a waste. It's such a waste for one person to buy this book, read it, and then just put it up on the shelf for it to collect dust. So I oftentimes give my books away, or um, I do listen to books on um, Audible, so that's another reason why I don't have a lot of books on hand. Um, but like I said, I pass books on, and I never want people to bring them back. I encourage them, like if they enjoyed the book, pass it on to someone else. Um, there's other reasons why um, I don't really care for having a lot of books. Um, first of all, we're trying to upgrade and our house and it's just taken up a lot of space. So there's that, I'm a minimalist. But yeah, I just feel like people should have those books in their hands. They shouldn't just be propped up on a shelf. And yeah, I also check books out of the library. So The Sweetness of Water is a book that I have on rotation actually at my job. The Sweetness of Water was amazing. So The Sweetness of Water was an Oprah's Book Club selection, and I was looking forward to it, but I have to admit, I was kind of like, another story taking place around enslavement, and it just, you know, I was in a space where I just didn't want something heavy, and I, I didn't want to read about enslavement. I just, you know, for me doing the work of diversity, equity, and inclusion, it's a lot, you know? I deal with a lot of heavy issues, and it was just a moment. I read this book over the summer, and I just wanted a break, I wanted an escape. And I was pleasantly surprised that the sweetness of water delivered, y'all. So these parallel stories are happening and Prentice and Landry just really opened my eyes. These characters, oh my gosh, what endearing characters in this book. Prentice and Landry, I just absolutely fell in love with them. I just thought, they just felt like family to me. And I was really truly like, intrigued by the relationship that they had with George and his wife, Isabel. And they end up having this connection. I hate to say bond because that's a little, that's a little much. I don't know if it was quite a bond, but they had a connection with um, the walkers that was really intriguing and, and complicated and, and something you wouldn't imagine when you're reading about, um, you know, post-Civil War era types of stories. I think that, that it was a bit un, of a stretch, a bit unbelievable that this white family would take in, and it's not like they took them in with loving arms. I mean, they were living in the barn, but it just seemed like it was a little too unbelievable that things would be this warm between them. But I went on the journey. I, I went on the journey with the author, Nathan Harris, who this is his debut novel, and he's a young guy. And can I just say, he is like legendary in my mind. One of the absolute best, most exquisite pieces of writing I have ever read. He is so uber talented. And so, yeah, I really loved this book. It was quite the surprise. So my question for you is, was the relationship that Prentice and Landry had with George, Isabel, and their son a little too far-fetched for you? And did that keep you from enjoying the book? I'm curious. Well, seven days in June. Whew, that book was hot and steamy. I was not anticipating this. Now, you're noticing that a lot of the books that were my surprise favorites of the year are like um, 
Reese's book club selections, um, read with Jenna selections, Oprah's book club selections. And I mean, that's not intentional. I, I just really believe that this was a good year for these book clubs. They were really good selections that they had chosen. And I just was all about it. I'm not always one to grab books just because they're a part of those larger, more well-known book clubs. But I mean, these books definitely did not disappoint. So seven days in June, these characters, oh my Lord, this book was hot and steamy and I happened to be reading it while on vacation. So I'm sitting like along the lake and reading this book and like glancing over at my hubby and I'm like, I see you, boo. I see you. Let's talk. Um, anywho. <laughs> Whoa! Okay. These characters are just captivating, magnetic, complicated, relatable, and they were just two gorgeous beings. I just pictured like two absolutely gorgeous beings. I would love to know if you read this book, who, if this was, if this book were to turn into a movie, who would you want to play the two main characters? the woman protagonist and the male protagonist. I'm really, really curious. I call her Eva. Um, I don't think it's Eva, but Eva was really a character that I just found myself on this um, emotional journey with her. I could feel like literally from like pains that she had, you could just feel the pain, the emotional and physical pain that she was experiencing and enduring. And so like she was just one of those characters that you felt a strong connection to. And so you were really truly um, on this journey with her and wanting to know what's gonna happen next. And you wanted the best for her. You wanted her to get a break. Um, loved, loved, loved the ending. But my question for you is, how did you feel about the ending? Was it, Never mind. I'm not gonna tell you that because I will give it away. Yay, so that's it. Those are my surprise favorites of 2021. I just love spending this time with you. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That would be awesome. Until next time, happy reading. Bye.